Hi, so here we are with a few steps in how to create a color astro photo. Step one would be to launch our program Fitz Liberator, which you should already have loaded on your computer. It will give you the open dialog box, and you've got four files here an R, G, B, and L. In this case, we're going to start with the R file, and they are, as you can see, in the FITS image file format. So step one would be to open these files and convert them into a more Photoshop-friendly format. Here is our FITS Liberator workspace, and we have some things that we can see. Our image, which if we click on the plus to zoom in a little bit, we get a better look at it. Very nice galaxy. And as you can see here in the middle, the, the center of this galaxy is, is white. And if you actually go over here on the side, you can see that it's being clipped as being beyond the, the grayscale spectrum. It's, it's hit white, and it's all white. And if we click on the black clipping, we can see where there's black. And right now, it doesn't seem to be much black in this image, which means that our black set point is not quite as black, even though it looks black, it's not quite as black. But we're going to turn the clippings off for the moment. What we want to do while we're here in Fitz Liberator is do a little preliminary adjustment of this histogram here, which are the overall shades of gray in the image. As you can see, it is a 16-bit image. Um, you may see that it comes in as a 32-bit. I recommend working with 16-bit images. It's plenty of data in there to play with. Here where it says stretch function, actually it probably defaults to this linear. Um, linear looks more like this, and there's less information available in the grayscale area. So if it says linear, which it probably will, go ahead and change it to this one, arc sine hx. And you can see that already starts bringing out some detail. Here we have our white level and our black level, which have been partially set for us here. We could go in and use these little eyedrop tools to select our black and white points and have it uh, adjust our, um, our histogram sort of automatically. But I think what we want to do is, since we just want to prep this file for import into Photoshop, we want to move our white point out to where you're not getting this much clipping in the middle because really when you've got that much clipping the data starts to there's no data there to play with things that are in grayscale you can always enhance and make them darker or lighter but if it's white or black there's nothing you can do to change those and here's our black point we could kind of go back here and look what happens when we move our black point back and we're increasing the, the grayness of this. Now all this data that you're starting to see in here, these sort of swirls of this galaxy, are in fact still present when our black is set here. It's just that they're in a much darker range of colors. So we really don't need to adjust it too much here. We can always adjust it further in Photoshop. So the next step here is once we've established our white point and black point, we've changed our stretch function to arc sine hx, we're going to save this file. And it saves it in TIFF mode, which also allows for 16-bit mode. We're going to save it right into the same folder that we've got the other FITS files. Then we're going to open up, that was the red, we're going to open up the green and the blue and repeat those same steps. Here you can see that we've got a kind of a strange default setting. We're going to change this first of all to arc sine hx and then we're going to move our white point back down here and even though it looks like the image has more or less disappeared, as I said before, the grayscale values are there they're just in the darker range and we can play with them and extract that information later when we're in Photoshop. So we're going to take this and we're going to save this now. And that's our green. And we're going to do the same thing, open, and we're going to 
do our blue. And we're going to do the same thing, arcsine hx. And we're going to set our white levels back down this way so it's not all blown out in the middle with the white clipping. And I think the black level is fine. Click on save. Put this here. We've got our RGs and Bs. And then the last one, um, oops, the last one was the luminance. And the luminance value, as you can see, is actually one of the brightest images, which is as it should be. And down here, it's saying 8-bit channels. We want to change that to 16-bit. I hope that was correct on the rest of these. We'll see. Again, it looks like the data's disappeared, but in fact, it's just been spread out. It's still actually there, and we can go ahead and play around with this more in Photoshop. OK, so we're going to save this as. And there's our luminance file. Good. Now that we have opened and converted our images from the FITS format into TIFF format, we can then open up those images in Photoshop and start working with them. Here we've got our Photoshop window. I'm going to choose open and I'm going to open So to find them first, and then we open them up. And in fact, we can hold down the control key and choose all four of them. And you see that I'm choosing the four TIFF files. And we open all four of these up at the same time. And here they are, up in tabs. So now we've got our four images, and they're nicely aligned. They're all in register. And what I would do is I would first go in and combine these images. You could go in and adjust the curves and levels, etc. individually first. Um, that's one way to do it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to go here to my channels and then I'm going to go under this little kind of hidden menu and let me pull this out so it can be seen. It's a little sneaky, it's a little hard to see. And down here you can see Merge Channels. This is what we want. And when Merge Channels comes up, we want to choose RGB. And it's not letting me because. Let me address this. So the images must be in the same bit depth, 16 bits, in order to be able to merge the channels properly. And the way that those are changed is under here, under mode, and down here you can see. So now they are all, in fact, 16-bit images. They were imported as 8-bit. That was incorrect. They should have been 16 bits to begin with, or even 32. OK, so we're going to go in here again, and we're going to choose Merge Channels over here. I know you can't see it, but it says right there, Merge Channels. And choose Channels number. There's three of them. That's correct. And then we're going to assign individual channels to the individual colors. So here we just got lucky red, R, green, G, blue, B. Important to name these files correctly so you know how to import them. Hit OK and there what it's done is it's actually combined those images into a red, green, and blue channel which combined make a color image. And here we've still got left our luminance value, which we're going to talk about that in one moment. So if we zoom in, Command Plus, or we can choose oh, Control Plus, rather, Control. If we zoom in, we can see that this image has started to, in fact, become a colorized image. But it doesn't look quite right yet. So what I need to do is I need to go in here and I need to adjust my levels and or my curves 
for these each individual channel here to extract appropriate amounts of information from them. Now as you can see, the blue channel seems to have the brightest contrast, the brightest amount of information. So proportionally I would say to try to keep that the same. Keep the brightest one, whatever it was to begin with. We're going to type in Control M, which brings up our Curves dialog box. And within our curves we can start adjusting how much brightness values the pixels have in my image. And we can choose to not allow the middle to get blown out by only enhancing certain ranges of colors, the midtones that we're trying to bring out. I don't want to push my blacks too far because then we start to lose information that way. And I don't want to push my whites too far because then we're losing information in the center of this galaxy. You can see it starts to become too white. So what we want to do is find a kind of a happy medium where we've got our white set at white and a nice curve that's enhancing the colors and I'm sorry the grayscale values of this galaxy. And there now you can see we're starting to get some real nice definition in the cloud lines of this galaxy. So we're going to hit OK and we're going to go ahead and do this again for these other channels. Control M to bring up the curves and we're going to do a similar function here but maybe you know like I said not quite as much as on the blue channel because the blue channel naturally had more information in it and as such we wanted to remain sort of proportional to that but we do want to extract this nice lovely detail and then again in the red control M to bring up the curves let me do this one more time bring out those same nice details oh there's a lot of good information here but we're losing this so we're gonna bring this back down we don't want to lose that information in the middle super massive black hole there. So now that we've adjusted the curves on these we can go back to my RGB and we can see that the color values are in fact starting to happen. We're starting to see some nice color. At this point we can go in we can start creating adjustment layers on top of there. We can choose to have a, a levels adjustment layer which is a non-destructive filter whereby we can enhance and adjust the brightness and contrast values of the entire image without actually changing any pixels. Um, this actually adds, um, it's sort of like a filter that happens on top of the original image, but without that filter on, the image goes back to where it was. So you can play with these as much as you want without actually doing any damage to the pixels of the picture and when you're done with this and when you're happy you can just move on and add another one so here's one let's just say we add that one we're gonna add another one here maybe this time we're gonna add a hue and saturation and we can say well we like this image but we want it to be a little bit more intense color so we can add a saturation we could adjust the hue a little bit if we wanted to we've got some kind of weird colors going on in here but basically, these are the steps with the levels, with hue and saturation. We can also go in here and do curves as well. And this would be a global curves setting for the RGB image rather than for the individual channels, whereby we could go ahead and extract even more data. As you can see, we're starting to really see these dust lines kind of pop, and that's what we want. And what I would do basically would be to start here with a curves, a level, and a hue and saturation value. And then from here, I would play with the test with the settings until it got to a place that I liked. And there we have the process of creating a color image from black and white images. I hope this was educational for you, and I hope you make some beautiful astrophotography. Bye-bye.